Good day, Grade Nines, and welcome to the second tutorial video in our series of cells as the basic units of life. And uh, in the video today, we're going to look at the differences between plants and animal cells. Okay, so the first thing that we must identify within a plant cell is that uh, plants always have a cell wall. All right, which exists just slightly outside of the cell membrane. Okay, so we have a, a depiction there of a um, plant cell or mini plant little cells there with a cell wall that is um, around it and it's just outside the cell membrane. All right, the cell wall that is protecting all those cells which hold the plant cells tightly together as we can see in the depiction in the drawing right over here. All right these plant cells are quite tightly pressed together because of the cell wall that holds them together. The definition of a cell wall would be that it is strands of cellulose which allows water and other dissolved chemicals to pass through the cell itself, all right? the cell wall of a plant cell, all right? which makes a plant cell much stronger as well as more regular. Many plant cells um, like we just saw on the previous slide, like that, which was just an example of one cell wall around um, a small section of plant cells, um, have a green substance, which is called chlorophyll, which is found within the organelles of, of a plant cell or plant cells, and those organelles of a plant cell is called the, chloro the chloroplasts. Okay? Plants are producers. All right, they are producers, all right, and they make sugar and starch from water and carbon dioxide in the light that they receive from the sun, all right. That's why we want to plant more plants or make our earth a bit more green so we can get more oxygen because the plants take in the carbon dioxide and they release oxygen. So they actually work together with us to keep us alive, if you want to think of it like that, grade nines. Okay, so in grade seven and eight, we learned that light is absorbed by plants, all right, and they make food with them, and this is how they make food, all right. In the light, there is water and carbon dioxide, and they produce sh sugar, starch, as well as oxygen. They produce food for other organisms to eat, all right, so plants also are, are we know, are a food source for other living forms, life forms, you know, animals and uh, insects, etc., etc., and other organisms, okay. Now, we've heard of the important process of photosynthesis, which is, which is light being absorbed by the plants, which is that whole process called photosynthesis. We know that that part happens in the green part of the chloroplasts, all right, which is why I used the color green in the previous, on the previous slide to show you um, that, the, that green substance there, the color green represents the chloroplasts, and that's where photosynthesis happens. Plant cells also contain a vacuole, all right, which is a large watery bubble, okay? When we water plants, this vacuole is pumped full of water and the cell then becomes firm, all right? That's also where the plant would store its water or store its liquid for when it is needed, all right? Such as in the dry season, some plants are able to sustain themselves. They don't die out, so they have larger vacuoles and they're able to store more water. Now animal cells also have vacuoles, all right? Animal cells also have vacuoles, but they are small and they also don't last very long as a plant cell. Plant cells vacuole can last very, very long. Over here, we have a drawing um, done by um, comparing a plant cell versus animal cell. We see over here, plant, this is plant, this is animal, and we can see the significant um, size difference depiction in vacuole. So these little uh, blue um, lines going down here is the color blue, um, and um, instead of spending a lot of time coloring in, I just shaded them in with those lines to make sure the background is blue, okay? So this is a very good drawing, which could be uh, examinable, of course, and um, 
this blue like substance here is the cytoplasm all right so this uh, the lines here represent in this color blue ma they match this, they match the color is the cytoplasm with the organelles okay so what we have here this little um, sub this little depiction here in red is the mitochondrion found in both um, um, the um, plant and animal cells and of course the outer shell so to speak is the cell membrane here we have the vacuole we can see the size difference between the plant and the animal the animal cells vacuole is very small or the plants vacuole is very large all right then we have the cell um, the nuclear membrane sorry which is found in the nucleus all right this is the nucleus the yellow represents the nucleus of both the, the different cells and of course that's where we find the DNA of the cells we find them in the nucleus of the cells moving on to the next topic which is cells in tissues organs and systems all right each cell has a specific function in our bodies all right so now we're moving more towards the human side of cells or looking at cells in the human body we're moving more towards that all right they perform specific functions they are called specialized cells all right and they obviously have different shapes and sizes all right let's take the example of a muscle cell okay they cause the body to move all right in other words the muscles pull on our bones our bones do not push on our muscles or our bones are not really the uh, driving force behind our movement but rather our muscles okay tiny fibers our muscles consist of tiny fibers in our muscles that allow the muscle to contract in other words become shorter okay and also within uh, these tiny fibers are found or, or um, microorganisms now in grade 8 we learned about bacteria all right bacteria is a microscopic or microorganisms all right that is only made up or only consists of one cells of one cell rather okay and um, microscopic obviously means you need to look under a microscope and macroscopic meaning we can see them with our naked eye all right we don't really need to look under a microscope to see them because they are quite multicellular now a group of cells specialized for a particular function that's called tissue all right or a tissue okay not the tissue that we blow our nose with but a tissue within our bodies consisting of a group of specialized cells all right so for example a group of muscle cells that are working together would be an example of a tissue then we have a group of different tissues that work together now when a group of different tissues work together for a specific function that's called a organ so for example muscle tissue works together with blood tissue nerve tissue and several others to make a muscle so each muscle therefore would be a different um uh, would be a, a different uh, or separate organ right each muscle in our bodies would be a separate or different organ muscle is not the only um, organs um, or muscle tissue is not the only organ that does exist of course we know we have our heart our heart is also an organ and it's also mostly muscle tissue which also contains blood nervous and skin tissue as well thank you for joining me in our video today looking at cells tissues and organs in our nervous system right it's been absolute pleasure stay tuned for the next video where we actually dive into looking at systems in the human body where we will look at the different systems that do exist within a human body we look, i look forward to having that tutorial video with you all